Okay, well now we're going to learn how to run the debugger itself. The first thing I'm going to do is get the code complete up and finish the application complete statement and make a call to init. Now just putting a, an application uh, together, if you haven't got a way to call a function, this block of code here will not automatically execute. So what we're doing is we're capturing and trapping what's called an event. An event is thrown when something happens. In this case, the application completes, and it will call the init function. And this will make a call and execute all of the code that's within these two angle brackets right here, two curly braces. Now, to run the debugger, instead of using the green button with the white arrow in it, use just to the left of it the debug. It looks like a small bug. And now that we've installed the debugger, it will provide us with the following behavior. First, prompting us to save the application. Secondly, it will run it. And if we go down and look at our console below, we'll see that in fact, it has printed out in the console, hello flash builder. Now, if you look up here, that's exactly what we had here. So what it's done is it's taken the variable foo, typed it to string, and added, created a new instance of it, and set the value of that string to equal this array of characters, and then it's traced it out. Now this is a very, very valuable mechanism to have for debugging your applications. You can actually determine what's going on while the application is running. In the next section, what we're going to do is look at how the access modifier of the variable prevents it from being called from certain places.